Look, bitch. If the Oscars for 2022 can be in February, so can the best of 2022 beauty. Just let me live. Hello, Champagne Dreamers. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. I hope you'll stick around. My name is Janessa, and I am North Dakota's trash queen of glam, geek, and gore. And for today's video, we are finally getting around to filming the best of 2022 beauty. Now, I know that this is a little bit late. That's just the way we roll sometimes. Sometimes... We just need a moment. We just need a minute. There's been a lot going on. I'm going to have a whole separate video about that. But we are going to get into it. I'm very excited. Uh, I had to do it a little bit differently this year. I didn't have all of the JanessaJ.com reviews to go back to. So we did it a little bit different. It's going to be kind of like a little award show. So I hope you're excited. And if you are, then settle in because we're getting into it right now. So we are here to do the best of beauty for 2022. Normally what I do is I go back to JanessaJ.com and I look through the archive and I look at all of the products that I reviewed over the year and I pick out the ones that I think are the best. Well, 2022 was a year. It was an experience. It was a lot. We started the year with the website down. So my website was down for a while. It had to do with just changing over the servers and some personal things that had gone on. And it just took me a little while to get the new website up and running. And then just with my job and everything that's been going on, I haven't had as much time or even as much inclination to do makeup reviews. So we're getting back into it kind of slowly but surely, but we didn't have enough material to really pick a best of beauty for 2022. So what I decided to do instead was treat it like an award show. So I'm going to go through my entire makeup routine and I thought about every step that I do along the way and I picked the best product that I discovered in 2022. Now the usual disclaimer that I give with these videos applies. Um, I discovered these products in 2022 and I think a lot of them came out in 2022 but there may be some products that came out a little bit earlier but I discovered them in 2022. So I can't guarantee that every single product on this list came out in 2022. Most of them I think did but there are going to be some that maybe came out in 2021 maybe even 2020. There's nothing that's too old on this list. Now there are some things in the list that I didn't have new discoveries for. So I don't try a ton of complexion products and things like that. So some of those I go to my staples. And so if I don't have something, I'll just mention what my current favorite is. But I wanted to make sure that for as many categories as possible, I had a new favorite that I discovered in 2022. So let's start with primers. I did try a couple of primers in 2022, but I didn't find anything that I really, really loved. There was nothing that became a must-have in my collection. I, I'm even struggling to think about what they were. I know that I tried some, but they didn't really make a strong impression on me. So my favorite primers still are the iHeart Revolution primers, the Strawberry Whip and the Peach Delight. These two, I love them and I use them together. So this one is a little bit tinted, and so it has a little bit of like a peachy color to it. This one is very silicone-y, and it's just really good. This one is almost gone, and this is, I think, the second or third tube that I've had of this. This one is getting down pretty low. I love these. And I should mention that pretty much everything I did on my face today is from the best of 2022. So now, I know that this makeup isn't necessarily the best look of 2022, I know I always say that eyebrows are sisters, not twins. These bitches ain't even friends. But everything on my face is done with products that are part of this list. Now for foundation, I did try a new foundation that I love, and I should have known that I would love it because I love the Oma Beauty regular foundation. So the regular line that they sell through Ulta, I love that foundation. That is 
fantastic. It's my favorite. It just went on sale not too long ago over the holidays, and I picked up a couple extra bottles. But I also really love the Oma Beauty by Sharon C. Flawless IRL Foundation. This is her bargain discount, less expensive, more affordable, however you want to describe it. This is her less expensive line that's available through Walmart. And this is about $14, where the other one is $40. And this one is on par with that Oma Beauty foundation. I actually really like this. So for $14 to get pretty much the same kind of experience, I'm here for it. And that's what I'm wearing today. The only thing with this is that it's harder to find a shade because the color names don't necessarily have the little markers that tell you if it's cool or neutral or warm. So there's a little bit of trial and error that you have to do, but I love the coverage. I love the way that it looks when it dries down. It's just a really beautiful foundation. Now for contour, I go back and forth. Sometimes I love a cream product. Sometimes I love a powder product, but I have really been loving cream contour again. I'm all for it. Powders sometimes are a little tricky for me, but I really love these Revolution Cream Bronzers. People have been raving about this. This is something, Makeup Revolution can definitely be hit or miss. Depending on the brand, it can be even more misses or more hits. Um, this is from the regular Revolution line, and these are really wonderful. I love to use these as contour. It's what I've got at the base of my contour today. They're just really beautiful creams. So this is the shade Medium, and this is what I'm wearing today. This is great for a filming day, for a photo shoot, where we're going to be a little closer up. It doesn't have to be quite as painted for the back row, although I still am a little bit over the top, even when we're close up. But this is a fun, kind of a little bit lighter shade if I want, don't want to be as extreme. And for shows, and we're just painting for the gods, or maybe we're doing something a little bit more editorial, this is the shade Deep, and I love this as well. These are both really great creams. They are the best contour that I tried in 2022. Now, concealer, typical story of my life. I have never found a concealer that I just love. I just never have. So I didn't find any new concealers. I don't know that I even really tried any new concealers. I have the Urban Decay All Nighters, which I kind of like. And then I have the Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealers. And I really do like these. I think that these are great. I got them on the 21 Days of Beauty when they were half off. I don't know that I'd buy them at full price. But these are the ones that I'm currently loving, and they're fine, they're great, they work for me. I've just never really found a concealer that does the things I want it to do effortlessly. There's always a little bit of work involved. There's a little bit of elbow grease that you gotta put in. So these are still my current favorite, but if you know of any concealers, let me know down in the comments below because I'm always looking for good ones that give me that brightening, that lightening. I just, I haven't found anything that I'm really in love with. For eye primers, it's kind of the same thing. I still love the Urban Decay Primer Potion in Eden. This is the one that's got a little bit of like a pasty bitch like me sort of flesh tone that it puts down. I really do like this one. It's been around for ages. It's nothing new. But in 2022, I did try the basic color primers from P. Louise. And I do really enjoy these. Now these are a little bit more specialized. Obviously they're brightly colored. So if you're doing a pink look or a blue look or both, you can use these for that. So they're a little bit more specialized. You don't get as much all purpose use out of them, but I do really like these. And I tried them in 2022. I swear we're getting to some exciting awards, but right now we're working through the complexion stuff. I don't try a ton of complexion stuff. I don't, I have my staples that I go to. Complexion doesn't really get me excited most of the time. And so it's no surprise for setting powder, baking powder, I don't have a new favorite. I still love the Kimchi Puff Puff Pass powder. This is my favorite. This is in translucent and I used it today to bake under the eyes a little bit. Now in 2022, I did try a new color of this, I tried Ivander, and it was not a great experience. That one is supposed to be a mix of like lavender and ivory, hence Ivander, but it was a little bit too purple when I put it on. It just looked really weird. My titty itches. So I kept it because I do have the Fenty Lavender Powder. I decluttered that one because I don't need a bunch of purple powders just like laying around. But when it comes down to it, I go back to this one, the translucent, all the time. 
Now I did get a new bronzer that I loved in 2022 and I use bronzer along with contour. That's how I used it today. I don't really bronze in the way that like the IG girlies are using bronze. For me, it's usually like a contour sort of product, but this one, I decided to keep it separate because the Revolution, I really do use for contouring. And then this I'll use to kind of buff out the contouring or to blend it into the blush. And that's the Flower Power Bronzer from Trixie Cosmetics. This is a really beautiful product. I really do like this. And what I like about it is that you get the two shades of bronzer. So you can go a little bit lighter, you can go a little darker, you can mix them. And then you get this highlight shade down here. Now, Teresa's dad got this and she was like, mm, this highlighter is a little bit jank. And I get it because she had the lightest one and that one does kind of look like it's meant to be a highlighter highlighter. But I don't think that this is actually meant to be a highlighter in the traditional sense. It's like a shimmery color that you can mix in with your bronzer. So if you want a lighter wash of bronze and you want a little bit of shimmer to it, you can work some of that in there as well. So sometimes you can just swirl it all together and get kind of a shimmer bronze moment. If you just want to add this to a little bit of contour or add this to a little bit of bronzer, you can kind of glow it up a bit. You can use any of the colors individually. I think this is a really smart product. I usually don't like when products are baked together all in the same pan, especially when the shimmery part is so like on the edge. If you want to adjust that, it's definitely tough to get to, but I really do like this product. It was the best of 2022 for bronzer. Mascara, I tried some mascaras in 2022. They were all duds. I still love me some better than sex mascara. Let's just move on. I wear falsies all the time, so I'm never gonna be that excited about a mascara. And speaking of falsies, I didn't really pick a favorite. If I had to pick one just off the top of my head, I would probably say the Haunted Lashes from Glamlight Scooby-Doo collection. And these did come out in 2022, but I've been loving Glamlight Lashes for years. It's just another pair of their same high quality lashes. So it's not really new. So it's not officially on this list, but I figured I'd call it out. All right, now that we've gotten through the boring complexion stuff, we're getting to color cosmetics. Are you ready to talk about some actual products? I am, absolutely. I am ready, I'm here for it, because there were some great things that I discovered in 2022. First, let's talk about blushes. I have been on my blush journey. I've got three videos in my little series of my blush journey. I'll link the start of the blush journey right here for you if you haven't seen it. And I absolutely love blush and I tried a ton of blushes. So I had a lot to pick from and I have a few different ones that I wanna highlight as being some of the best. Let's start with matte blush. In terms of matte blush, I would say the best that I tried in 2022 were the blushes in the Solmana 2 collection from Odin's Eye Cosmetics. So these are really beautiful. And the matte ones especially are just gorgeous. So this is the shade Sunset Clouds. And this pink, I sort of blended into my contour for this look today. I absolutely love this. Now the shimmer blushes are also gorgeous, but I did have other shimmer blushes that I thought were a little bit better. But in terms of the matte blushes that I tried this year, the Solmana 2 blush collection really were the best of the best. Now in terms of the best glowy blushes, some people may feel like I'm cheating a little bit. And I did love the Odin's Eye, so if you're butthurt about me picking a highlighter for this, then you can just say that it was the Odin's Eye shimmer blushes as well. But I love to take a highlighter that's too dark for my skin and use it to glow up a matte blush. And so my favorite shimmer blushes are the highlighters from the House Labs collection. So this is Fire Opal. And I used Fire Opal along with that pink blush Sunset Clouds, and I used it just to glow it up. What I love about using a highlighter like this is that the color is too deep to really be used as a highlighter on my skin tone, but because it's a highlighter, it's not necessarily the same like bam pigment that you get with blush. It's a little bit more sheer, it's a little bit more wash of color. So if you put down a matte blush and then blend out a shimmer highlighter on top of it, this is absolutely gorgeous. I love this. This is the one I use today. This is Fire Opal. It's absolutely a favorite. 
And if you need to embrace the pink trend that's hitting us so hard right now, this is Rose Quartz. And this is another one that's just beautiful with a pink blush to just glow it up, give it a little extra shine. And you could work it up into like a light pink or even a champagne highlighter. So beautiful. Now you might be surprised to hear that I even have a favorite liquid blush for 2022. Or should I say, blush? Because now I need to get the blurshes. The blurshes? The blurshes. Blursh. <laughs> blursh. The liquid blursher. Blursh. Blursh. Such a dumb word. I tried out these fabulous yellow and orange blurshes from Made by Mitchell in a Get Ratchet With Me. I'll go ahead and link that up here in the corner if you haven't seen it yet. It's worth a watch. And these really were fantastic. And the ombre blush look that I came up with with these, I thought was phenomenal. I loved it. Now, if you're like me and you've struggled with liquid blush, I have always had trouble with it. I've never found a way to use it really well until now. And the secret to my success is this sponge from Real Techniques. Now, this is... I forget what it's called. I think it's called like the ultimate sponge or something. And it's this one that's this like turquoisey color. And I know that it just kind of looks like a regular Real Technique sponge, but this one is a much more porous, softer, like it feels fluffier. There's something about it. And this one, it's wet with liquid blush. I was able to do amazing things with this because usually liquid blush will like destroy my foundation underneath. I'm trying to like blend it out, but this is just so soft and perfect. So if you're having trouble with liquid blush or you've got some liquid blushes in your collection that you haven't been able to get to work with your other products, I would say just avoid powder until after you've put the blush on and then try out this sponge because I love it. This is an unofficial favorite tool for 2022. Blush. Now for single highlighters, it should come as no surprise. I loved the blushes. And I also love the highlighters from Odin's Eye, the Solmana 2 collection. All six of them. I have all shades of the blushes and highlights. And these really were fantastic. And with this two-toned eye look that I did today, I decided to mix it up a little bit. So on the pink purple side, I used this blue highlighter, which is called Azura Sky. Azura Sky? Azura Sky. Who can say? And on the blue-green side, I used this shade, Pink Star, which looks really yellow in the pan, but it goes on with this beautiful fuchsia pink reflect. And I love highlighters so much. I try highlighters all the time. I love them. I love to glow for the gods. I know people have gotten into this, like, wet look, barely there highlight. Not me. I am domo origato, Mr. Roboto. I want a ton of highlighter. And so I also had to give a favorite highlighter palette it because this one I couldn't let this go without mentioning it and that is the Noctilucent palette from Blend Bunny Cosmetics. These highlighters are next level. They're so glittery. If you don't like glittery highlights this probably isn't for you but the shifts and the beautiful color on these highlighters absolutely phenomenal. So I've used these in a couple of Get Ratchet With Me's I think at least one. I think I used this shade right here in Lighten, which is kind of the gold shimmer reflect, I used this in that Made by Mitchell Ombre Blush tutorial. And I also used that down the center today. So since I was doing the alternating highlights, I decided to highlight the center. I would use this since we've got this pop of yellow that kind of ties the two eyes together. And so I used this um, on the center on my nose, Cupid's bow and chin. And then I also used Phenomena to kind of build up the pink highlight a little bit. And then uh, the shade Apparition, I believe, is the one that flashes blue. And I use that to kind of punch up the highlighter as well. So I did use a couple shades on the cheek and down the center. Love, love, love the Noctilucent palette for Blend Bunny. And I'm never going to be your go-to drugstore recommendation person. I don't do a lot of shopping at the drugstore. I every once in a while will try a few products and I am planning to do like a full face Get Ratchet With Me using Flower Beauty because I keep hearing how wonderful a lot of the things from Flower Beauty are. And I do like some staples and things and like the Revolution brands. You know, obviously their primer, that cream contour, were the best of the year. But my best drugstore find for 2022 were the Avatar Way of Water Collection Highlighters 
from NYX Cosmetics. And I love these. Again, they're cream highlighters, but they're really great for blending out on the cheeks. They have really interesting colors. They've got beautiful shifts. So for a drugstore brand to have this kind of duochrome shift in a highlighter, I think is really amazing. So these are really fun to play with. This beautiful like green, blue, brown, I mean, this is just a fun color where it just gives you a little wash, but then you've got that beautiful kind of glittery greenish, oh, so good. So I'm never gonna be the expert on the drugstore, but I can tell you those are fire. All right, so now let's get into eyeshadows. I love eyeshadow. That's what I've been buying the most of lately. I used to buy a ton of lipsticks, and in fact, I didn't have any lip products on here. I love lipstick. I love liquid lipstick. I have been getting more into glosses for filming days and photo shoots and things like that, but I didn't have any lip products that really jumped out at me. I guess if I had to mention anything, I would say like the liquid lipsticks from Trixie Cosmetics are really good. I hope she puts out more. She's only put out a few shades so far, but I really like the formula. They wear really well. So Trixie Cosmetics is probably on this list, but I didn't have any that really stuck out to me. I mean, as I was making the list, I completely forgot about lip products. So this lip right here is a NARS liquid lipstick in the shade Dragon Girl. I think that's been around for a long time. It's nothing new. It's nothing fancy. So I just don't have any lip products. But eye products, I had to break this out into a lot of categories because I tried a lot of eyeshadow and there was a lot that I really, really loved. So let's start with neutrals because obviously we know I am this. I am a Technicolor nightmare. But every once in a while I like to play in some neutrals. I like to try something that's a little bit more everyday girl about town. And this is gonna be so reflective in the camera. So be prepared. My favorite neutral palette of 2022 is the Star Wedding palette. Now I know Jeffree Star is back in the news again because he said he was gonna come back to YouTube because he gives honest reviews and people are mad about it. And some people are just like, uh, it's a whole thing. But I have to say that this was the best neutral palette that I tried. I tried a few, I didn't try a ton. Obviously I go for more colorful, but I really did like the neutrals in this palette. And what I like about this particular take on neutrals is that we've got a little bit of beigey, brown, bronzy kind of things, but we've also got some cool tone, we've got some blacks and grays, and then we've got these more berry tones. So we start to get into berries and plums. And then of course, for a color lover, a hooker clown like me, we had this bright pop of neon pink right in the center, Mrs. Star. I think this is a great little thing if you wanna have a neutral palette that just gives you one option to go crazy and add a little pop of color, this is a great one. But I love that, that some of these neutrals are a little bit more pink berry toned. We've got some that are a little bit cooler. I used this shade right here, I do, to fill in the brows. Um, so I really do like this. Neutrals are never gonna be my go-to, but when I like to play, this is the perfect kind of palette for me to play with. Now let's pause for a second. I'm gonna talk more about this in a later video, but I don't know when I'm gonna have a chance to film that video, which I'll talk about in another video that we're filming today, it's a lot. I wanna talk a little bit about the toxicity in the beauty community because people go back and forth about the beauty community is toxic, no it's not, blah, blah, blah. I really have seen it pop up now that he said that he's gonna come back to YouTube and talking about honesty with the whole Michaela Lashgate shit that's going on or whatever. Um, I was in a live stream and it's a YouTuber that I really, really like. And it's a YouTuber that I have financially supported their content for a long time. I'm a channel member. I saw this live stream pop up and I hadn't been able to go to one of their lives for a long time. And so I was like, let's go and it'll be fun. And people were talking about it. And it was about getting messy and talking about some of the like scandals. It was talking about Lashgate or whatever. And I went to that chat and it was really interesting and it was really fun. But there was a little section towards the end where they started talking about Jeffree Star. And the thing that I have is that you can feel however you want. People can feel however they want about Jeffree Star. I have all kinds of feelings, and this will certainly be part of that discussion. But in this live stream, there was somebody who is a moderator on that channel. So not just a random person who wandered in, but a person who I recognize from the live streams, somebody who's in all the live streams and is a moderator. And 
Again, I get it if you want to feel however you feel about Jeffree Star. And there were a lot of people in the live stream that were making nasty comments about Jeffree Star. And that's fine. You know what? Jeffree Star is a public figure. Now, I still have some feelings about what kind of person goes onto the internet just to say nasty things about a famous person. I still have a little bit of side eye for that, but they're a public figure. They're open to public comment. I get it. So if you want to go on and you're on with your friends and you want to burn some trash, that's fine. Whatever. Cool. But this person who was a moderator on this live stream started making really nasty comments in a general way about people who purchase Jeffree Star products. And just really nasty, mean-spirited comments. I'm going to go ahead and put some up on the screen so that you can read them. And these were just in the live stream. They were unprompted. And I'm sure that she didn't mean anything by it. I'm sure she didn't think there was anybody in the chat that actually purchased from Jeffree Star or whatever. She thought she was in an echo chamber, where it was all people who felt the same way. But while other people were leaving comments that were more about Jeffree Star and who he is as a person and what they think about him. She was leaving comments that were directed specifically at people who shop at the brand, which I just felt a different kind of way about. I really felt icky about this. It didn't make me feel like that was the kind of community that I wanted to be a part of, which is unfortunate because like I said, I have financially supported this channel. It's not just that I go and I watch and I click or whatever. I have been a paying channel member for over a year. And it just was one of those things where it was just the kind of behavior that was allowed to go on that I was like, that's really sketchy. Especially when you consider that this person was part of a whole controversy. I'm trying not to give too much away, but I'm probably going to here. There was a live stream with Kara C., where she made some sort of joke that people felt was inappropriate. And it was just kind of an offhanded thing. It was clearly not mean-spirited. And really for the type of joke that it was, I mean, she was excommunicated. She disappeared from everybody's channels, everybody's live streams, was almost never mentioned again for that. But then we have this person who's a moderator who comes in and is just saying really nasty, mean-spirited things about this just kind of faceless group of people that she doesn't know, not knowing who's in the audience, not knowing who's a part of that live stream. So I just am really sick of the toxicity in the beauty community. And I just wanted to bring that up because I was giving this award to a Jeffree Star palette. And I know some people, that's enough that they're just going to click off my channel. And you know what? If that's how you feel about it, if that's how much you get to know the people that you interact with on YouTube and in social media, then go then go. If one purchasing decision is enough to make you say, I'm not going to support that person, then go. You are never supporting this channel anyway, if that's how much it takes. If you look at a person and judge them for one brand that they shop at or whatever it is, bye. The trash doesn't need to announce when it takes itself out, okay? All right, enough of that rant. Let's get back into the awards, and let's give the award for the best neon brights palette. And my award for the best neon and brights goes to the Trixie Cosmetics Girl Talk palette. Now, you'll notice that some brands are appearing on this list more than once, and that is absolutely by design. I still buy from a lot of random indie brands, but I feel like there's been a lot of little brands that pop up. And even if the products are good, they like do one release and then they disappear. And it feels kind of cash grabby. So I've been a little bit more selective in who I buy from. And so now I'm much more about sticking to those brands that I know that I love and looking at their newest releases. And the Girl Talk palette was so good. This is just a beautiful collection of neons and brights. These greens will live forever in my heart. I always love a pop of yellow. These purples are gorgeous. Hot pink, I mean, this is just the perfect 90s fantasy. This is absolutely what I need. For neon and brights, this is my favorite. So this is absolutely, if you can get your hands on this and you love neons and brights, it's absolutely worth it. The formula is great. All of these shades are bangers. Absolutely love it. Girl talk, we're here for it. Now the next palette I want to talk about, we know that I love green. I talk about it constantly. I buy lots of palettes that are either 
all green or majority green or have pops of green. I love it. So I was like, let's do a green palette. And this one isn't necessarily all green, but it's a lot of greens and the colors that they're combined with, I think are just a really interesting, fun combination. And so my best green palette for 2022 is the Nomad Cosmetics Monteverde Cloud Forest, Cloud Mountain, what is it? The Nomad Cosmetics Monteverde Cloud Forest palette. I love this. I mean, get into this beautiful cover with a sloth. It's got a little sloth on it. How could I not love that? And what I love about this palette is that this is a collection of a lot of greens with these beautiful matte neon shades. I love neons. And so I thought having especially like these green shimmers and just so many like beautiful green colors where you get that foresty kind of feeling and then you can combine any of these like neon matte pops of colors. It's like beautiful flora in the forest, in the rainforest. Just gorgeous. I think this is phenomenal. I've really been loving Nomad Cosmetics. I don't think they're my favorite formula, but I do really, really enjoy them. And this, I think, for a green palette, especially if you're a little bit intimidated by greens, this gives you a lot of fun greens to work with, but you also get to bring in those other contrasting colors, which I think is great. Now let's talk about best rainbow palette. This should not come as a surprise to anybody. I've talked about this in other videos and how much I love it. I actually used it in my first ever collab video with Makeup by Torrance to supplement the Danessa Myricks Lightworks Volume 4. And that is the Blend Bunny Blends palette. This, I think, is a perfect rainbow palette. What I love about this is that for every color in the rainbow, so we've got red, orange, yellow, green, turquoise, blue, purple, and violet, we get three shades. We get a pastel, we get a mid-tone shade, and we get a deep shade. And I love that you get that for all of them, because sometimes rainbow palettes, you're lucky if you get one yellow or one green. So I love that for each one, if you wanted to do a monochromatic look, you've got these gray shades here, and then you've got three shades of green, of purple, of red, whatever you want to do. We've also got these three kind of matte um, skin tone transition type shades in ranges of browns. This is such a great starter palette because you can do monochromatic looks with each of these colors and then you can start branching out and using colors that are next to each other using weird combinations where you bounce from one to the next and just see how it works out it's so good now i know that this is an all matte palette but i think that gives you the best options because you can use the mattes to set up your look and then bring in a beautiful shimmer bring in a multi-chrome Bring in some other shadow to supplement this, but you can do your base or you can do beautiful all matte looks with this. So I think that this is such a good rainbow palette. If you don't have a rainbow palette, if you're nervous about rainbow palettes, this is a perfect starter. If you're getting started with drag, these are beautiful rainbow shades that would help you get started building your makeup practice and figuring things out. I think that this is so well done. Even among my eyeshadow palettes, I think this is one of the best, even just overall of the year. I love the Blends palette, so good. Now let's talk a little bit about collab palettes. So I've got two different categories for collab palettes. One is collabing with a person, and one is collabing with an intellectual property. So let's start with the person. Is anybody gonna be surprised by this? We know I talk on and on and on about how much I love Angelica Nyqvist from Sweden. And I absolutely love the Hella palette that Angelica did with Odin's Eye. This is such a beautiful, stunning, gorgeous palette. I love this sort of sepia tone, more washed out sort of color. I very rarely keep the sleeves to palettes, but I love that they did this on the sleeve and then give you this full color realness on the inside on the palette cover. So gorgeous. This representation of the goddess Hela with Angelica in the middle as Hela. Ah, oh, so good. Odin's Eye always kills it with the packaging, but this is probably my favorite. And then we get inside. Obviously this could have been a contender for my favorite greens of the year. I love the way that she did these kind of swampy acid greens and combine them with these pinks and then these plums. 
I think that's such a beautiful color story. I think it's an interesting juxtaposition. I love green and pink together, and people don't always do it. And if they do, they often do like a baby pink with like a sage green. And I love this more like hot pink with acid green. I think it's 80s. I think it's a little bit punk. I absolutely love it. This to me was the best person collab of 2022. Now for the best IP collab, I don't have them in front of me because they're actually packed up. I'm leaving tomorrow morning to go to a photo shoot and I'm bringing them with me because they are gorgeous. And I think the best IP collab of 2022 was the Glam Light Scooby Doo palettes. I think that they are phenomenal. I love that they did two separate palettes. They did two 10 pan palettes that were half matte, half shimmer, beautiful range. They did coordinated shades. Just absolutely stunning. The same typical beautiful glam light formula that I've come to love. Absolutely love it. Scooby-Doo was the best IP collab of 2022. Now, speaking of Odin's Eye, if I had to give an award for the best mystery box of 2022, I would say that it was the spring mystery boxes from Odin's Eye. You got a really good assortment of products. You got eyeshadows and lipsticks and liquid lipsticks and highlighters and brushes and it was just a beautiful mixture of products i feel like you really got a good value i'm going to be keeping an eye out to see if they do more mystery boxes like that in the future i thought it was absolutely phenomenal so i'm going to give it to odin's eye and definitely check out the unboxing to see all the things that i got holiday celebrate copyright strike so I had to give a special award to the best holiday release of the year. There was a ton, a ton of Halloween palettes. I loved it. And if I could have given all of them some kind of award, oh, they were so good. There were so many good Halloween releases this year. So I found a way to work in two of them. And the first one is for best holiday release. And that is the Spooked Palette by Gourmand Girls. This is such a beautiful, beautiful palette. I love that it has the very traditional sort of Halloween colors. You've got the bright green, orange, and purple. And then we've got like a blood red and a black and another purple. But then we've got this mixture of other colors to really make it much more versatile and much more wearable. So we get all of the sort of ooky spooky colors that we expect from a Halloween palette, the sort of Halloween vibe, but you get it in a way that you can really create such a wide variety of looks. It can be for every day. Sometimes you get palettes that are like Halloween-y and you kind of have to use them at Halloween because they're all just the green, purple, orange or they're a little bit more specialized. This is something you can use all year long. It's absolutely beautiful. It gives me what I need and so much more that I didn't even know that I needed. Now, I also want to give a shout out to the best singles collection. Now, that's what I have on my eyes today. And before we get into this, I do want to say I haven't used it very much and it wouldn't be the best for me because the shades are a little bit off. I do want to say a huge shout out to Sydney Grace and the Mel Thompson collection. I think it's wonderful that they took the Mel Thompson inspired by Natasha Denona collection of singles and put them together so that you could order it because Mel Thompson, may she rest in peace, absolutely did a much better sage green and light pink sort of bundle collection palette than what Natasha Denona gave us with that retro glam palette. That was, oh no. So I did love that, but for me, it's a little bit too washed out. It's a little bit too pastel light. I love it, but it's never going to be my favorite. I'm this. And so my award for best single collection of 2022 are the Give Me Glow Nightlife palettes. And what I love about this is that these were all available as singles. So if you wanted one shade, you could get one shade. And some of them were previously available shades. A lot of them were new and they did two different color stories. And you could buy just the singles. You could buy these beautiful coordinated palettes. It was really mix and match whatever met your needs. So for my pinky purple eye, I used this side. This is the Coral Nightlife. 
This has some beautiful, beautiful shades. Very warm, very Miami. This is the original shade. I think it's called Rave Princess that most people got broken. Mine came broken, but it was so beautiful. I just pushed it back together and I never asked for the replacement shade. I just loved it so much that I was like, I have to keep that. So I know they substituted a slightly darker, I think a little bit more purple shade. This is the original and I'm so glad that I have it because it's beautiful. And then for my green blue eye, here is the green blue palette. Now I do have to say, I love Give Me Glow, but as I was opening this to show it off, the green matte shade Limeade, the shadow just fell out of the pan. And that is one thing that I will say about Give Me Glow's matte formula. It's very dry and it does have a tendency to crack and I've had several of them like crack and fall out of the pan. And this one did that. And Limeade in particular, because even before I ordered this set, I had Limeade as a single that I got earlier. And I had gotten it and I got it replaced because it came broken. And then I got it and within a day it had cracked. I didn't ask for a replacement. I just pressed it together and put it into the palette. So when these came out, I was like, even though I have Limeade, I'll order a new one with the palette. I'll just order the whole collection. And now that one has broken too. So that kind of tarnishes it a little bit for me. But I do love these collections. I think that they are really beautiful. And they're just really fun. So if you're looking for singles, I've wanted to play more with my singles. And I think that having this option where you can order it as a palette and you can get the sort of beautiful coordinated artwork and you can arrange the shades however you want... Um, I think that's great. Or you can just order a shade or two, whatever works for you. Why does Limeade always have to break my heart? And our last award for the Best of Beauty 2022, this is my Best Black Owned Makeup Brand Palette. This was one of the ways that I could sneakily work in another Halloween palette because I think the best palette that I bought from a Black Owned Makeup Brand this year was the Apocalypse Palette from Clarity Cosmetics. This is so much fun. And this is another great example of how to do a fun Halloween palette that you can wear all year round. So this is a half and half matte and shimmer palette. And so we've got kind of a gray and a blue and an orange and a pink and a green. So it's giving you some kind of murky, zombie, apocalypse kind of vibes. But any of these colors would be appropriate all year round. You don't have to just use them at Halloween. And then we have these beautiful shimmers. And three of them are these really interesting, very shifty multichromes. I'll try to include some swatch images that I took for my website. But these are really beautiful multi-chromes and so this palette was a little bit more expensive but you got these multi-chromes in with these mattes and it's just a beautiful collection of shades that plays with the murkiness and the spookiness of Halloween but it's appropriate for the entire year and I love that I was able to get this from a fabulous new black owned makeup brand you never know you may have a third installment of my black owned makeup brands to try that aren't Fenty or Pat McGrath series coming in 2023 all right, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments below. Are there any other awards that you would give, especially for those ones where I maybe didn't have anything? Do you have a favorite concealer from 2022? Do you have a favorite lipstick? Do you have a favorite powder? What are some of the things that you discovered and really loved in 2022? Let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear about them. Maybe you'll see them in an upcoming video. While you're down there, don't forget to give me that thumbs up. We love it. We love to hear that you appreciate the content or if you think I'm a blowhard if you thought I picked all the wrong products and I'm, I have terrible taste let me know by giving me that thumbs down you know what it's all engagement the algorithm isn't a picky bitch and neither am I also while you're down there don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of all future uploads I'm not even gonna say that I do one a week I've been pretty consistent with at least one a week because I've been uploading vintage episodes of my podcast those are getting close to coming to an end unless I go and digitize uh, season two of Janessa After Dark we'll see how it goes we might try to get those going because as you're going to hear in an upcoming video, my filming schedule might be all over the place. But all of that aside, I try to do one video a week. And if you're lucky, very lucky, you might even get a bonus video. Ooh, star-studded awards spectacular. These aren't getting any better in 2023.
If you like to chat, banter, or commiserate between uploads, all of my social media will be linked down in the description box below, including a link to my website, The World of Champagne, at JanessaJ.com. Thanks so much for watching. I love and appreciate all of you. I hope you enjoyed my best of 2022 beauty. I love a little retrospective, a little look back at the year that we just passed, all of the makeup that I bought, all the fun that we had. We laughed, we cried. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And I'm excited for all the stuff that's coming in 2023. And until I see you again, bye. Well. <laughs> Crunch that chip. Eat that. <laughs> I don't know why you insist on bringing all the loudest snacks in the world. I need something to keep me busy while we're filming. I just brought my rock tumbler. Is that okay? <laughs> I made this one chip here too. Okay. I have peanuts as well, but they're crunchy peanuts. <laughs> all the noisy ones. It oh, sounded noisy. good. Uh. Pretty girl. Yes. Starting early. This is in the shade medium. This is... Oh, I guess we have to stop.